Hi guys, welcome to the workshop at Jetar Aviation. We're going to do a nice behind the scenes video for you today to show you some of the differences between a Harrier GR3 and a Harrier GR1. Uh, this is part of the restoration of Airways Harrier XV741. The aircraft came into us as a Harrier GR3 which was a latest specification used up until the 1990s. Uh, we're converting the aircraft back to transatlantic air race spec from 1969, which is when the Harriers first entered service. Uh, so we're converting this specific aircraft back to a Harrier GR1. And as part of that process, there's quite a few differences and modifications that we're going to have to make to get the uh, end result that we're looking for. To start with, we're going to cover the tail cone. On this side here, we have a Harrier GR3 tail cone. This is what the aircraft came into us with. Uh, this is a later spec. It's got a different profile. Um, it's got a radome fitted on the end which is made of fiberglass and inside it would normally house a radar warning receiver to pick up if the aircraft was locked onto by say a missile or a radar system that would send a signal to the cockpit to alert the pilot. Uh, the cone also has two navigation lights fitted one either side whereas the earlier specification cone which is this one here uh, has only one light on the tail and this is a very basic aerodynamic fairing. This one here was very kindly loaned to us by the guys at the Harrier Heritage Centre down at RAF Wittering. Without those guys working with us on this and lending us this cone we would not have been able to uh, solve this part of the problem for this restoration. Um, we did actually manage to find one of these cones for sale in the United States but it was at a ridiculous price of 30,000 US dollars which for an obsolete part that no airworthy aircraft anywhere in the world is using we couldn't justify that on this restoration so the next best thing uh, was to solve the problem by doing a bit of good old-fashioned uh, reverse engineering and in the land of um, the Harrier where we built and designed the Harrier back in the 50s and 60s it's not beyond the wit of man to find some old guy in a shed who's got an English wheel who could actually make one of these so that's what we did uh, and in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one we made earlier. Uh, this is the tail cone which we're going to go and fit shortly onto the Air Race Harrier. We're absolutely over the moon with this. This is a good old fashioned bit of English craftsmanship. Even the little grills and the fa fastenings and fixings we've used are proper Harrier ones which we've spared recovered. And the finishing touch was a BAE Hawk tail light which we've cut down and modified. It's Basically the exact same parts used on a very very early Harrier so uh, we're over the moon with the end result. We're going to go and fit this to the aircraft now and see what it looks like. Okay guys we're out in the hangar and as you can see the team have now fitted the replacement tail cone to take the aircraft back to GR1 specification on the rear. The uh, finishing touch has been brand new screws all the way around and the navigation light has been wired in on the tip so that now all works as it should. As you can see it's just a basic aerodynamic fairing that's fitted onto the tail boom just to finish the back end off. There's quite a lot going on on the tail boom of a Harrier, so I'll just talk you through some of the things you can see behind me. Um, this is what's known as a reaction nozzle. It's a small valve that opens and closes. Um, this one on the side controls the aircraft in yaw while it's in the hover, and when the pilot moves the rudder with the rudder pedals in the cockpit, the rudder will move left to right but also the reaction nozzle also moves left and right to allow high, uh, high pressure bleed air from the engine to blow out of this duct. There's one of these on either side of the tail boom and when this one opens the one on the other side closes and vice versa. Uh, very simple but ingenious way of controlling the aircraft while it's in a hover and that works incredibly well. Uh, on the underside we have another reaction nozzle which you can see here. This one is to control the aircraft uh, in pitch. This one pitches the tail up uh, by opening and closing as the pilot moves the tailplane. Uh, again, that allows high pressure bleed air out of that valve. And you can see the small rod which connects onto the tailplane. So once the tailplane moves up and down through a series of control rods and bell crank levers, that opens and closes the reaction nozzle on the underside of the tail boom to lift it up in pitch. Uh, 